Welcome, this is My Randomology, and today we're starting the month of love. And what exactly is more romantic than a half-humanoid abomination covered in tentacles seeking out a mate in order to destroy all life on Earth? Yeah, it is that infamous 1995 movie Species. Now, in the strictest sense, I kind of saw this when it first came out. Now, I was in California visiting family and my uncle decided to take a bunch of uh, the cousins out to go to a drive-in movie theater because we'd never been to a drive-in movie theater and it just seemed like a really fun thing to do. And for some reason, my uncle decided that this movie was appropriate for a bunch of eight to 12 year olds. So past the first few minutes, I never actually saw it. I've seen pieces of it in snippets like here and there, like when it was on like Sci-Fi Channel or something like that. But I've never actually seen the movie because at a, uh, very early on, you'll be able to guess what, what, at what point, uh, my uncle basically uh, took the little speaker thing, moved it away from us and told us to get in the back seat because we really should not be watching this. But he still wanted to watch the movie. He paid for it. He paid for all of our butts. So we just kind of went to the back of the minivan and just kind of played there while he watched the movie. So I've never actually seen this past the first couple of minutes. So this will be as new to me as it will be to you. And so without much further ado, let's get to the movie. Dude, Ghostbusters effects. Isn't that monster energy drink font? Space, the final frontier. These are the voyages of Ben Kingsley. Oh yeah, I forgot Dr. Octopus was in this. All right. I also forgot Forrest Whitaker was in this. What were you doing in this, Mr. Whitaker? Music by Christopher Young, but I'm, I'm getting kind of a Danny Elfman vibe from this. Like, it almost sounds like... Yeah, like right there, right there, that little... Yeah, it, it sounds like we're about to watch Edward Scissorhands or Sleepy Hollow. For the past 30 years, the world's most powerful radio telescopes have been scanning the heavens searching for signals from alien civilizations. The project is called SETI, Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence. I feel like this is something that we could have been just told or shown at some point. Ain't that thing that Ghost was using in uh, Ant-Man and the Wasp? Damn, Ben Kingsley with the single tear out of one eye. That is, that's talent. Which makes me wonder why he's done half of the really crappy movies that he's done in the last 20 years. 30 years. And let's face it, Ben Kingsley's an amazing actor, award-winning actor, highly respected for a lot of the work that he's done, but man's been in more crap than corn. Oh God, this place has worse security protocols than an umbrella facility. I wouldn't be surprised if it was run by umbrella. Why are there not like two dozen soldiers like stationed around this girl? Like they know what she is. I mean, they don't know exactly what she can do. Like where were all of you 30 seconds ago? And why is there a gap in the barbed wire? Why is there a gap in the barbed wire? Oh my God. Oh damn. Kind of feel like that maybe would have broken the wood, but sure. <laughs> She's smart. They're really taking their time just kind of playing up how how innocent and also how scared she is. Like I remember I remember this section here. Um I think the 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 vagrant on the train dining was when my uncle started realizing that he'd made a big mistake, but I kind of remember like seeing a bit of this where yeah, she's just she's just trying to find food. She's hungry, she's scared, she's tired. Um <laughs> she doesn't know what any of this stuff is. So it's interesting. Like they're they're really they're really building her up as kind of a uh, a very innocent figure. Very good care. You go with your door. I won't be gone for very long. Take care of yourself. Michael Matz is one of those uh, right. actors that, uh, given all the uh, the kind of characters that he plays, most famously Mr. Blonde, uh, um, he's apparently just like the one, one of the nicest straight. guys in Hollywood. It's it's Why weird. What the maximum overdrive is that? Oh, it's a nightmare. Okay, that makes slightly more sense. Oh, is uh, she about to hit alien puberty? Yep. Oh, wow. That's actually pretty horrific. 
So is that CGI, my god. Okay. It, still being a really tragic character like this, I, I, that's different from what I thought it was gonna be. Oh, god. Oh, that looks like month old stroganoff. I kind of wonder if that actually was Natasha Henstrich, like, strung up up there in the corn syrup. I am sickened, but curious. In November of 1974... Backstory! So that whole little Not title so. sequence with Arecibo in the beginning, we really could have done without it, because we're getting exactly what I said. I can't, couldn't we have been told this? We decided to make it female so that it would be more docile and controllable. More docile and <laughs> You need to get out more. You guys don't get out much. I just said that. <laughs> she didn't like being locked up like that. She didn't like being alone like that. You think, Dan? Where'd you learn that fact, Dan? I saw it on the documentary on Discovery Channel. <laughs> Oh, they're checking all the blonde girls. Jeez. I mean, this is a great place for her to try to hide out. I mean, it's L.A. She's not going to stick out. Something bad happened here. No shit. No shit. Crushed her larynx. She was Damn it, Lennox. I... Los Angeles is where the battle's going to be fought. Oh, don't be such a drama queen. I mean, I know she just killed two people, but... They really are portraying her like that. Like, there's nothing malicious about the stuff that she's done. Like, the first one she was defending herself. The second one was probably just like a like a reaction or something. And she doesn't feel remorse, but that's not necessarily like doesn't necessarily make her evil. It is slightly odd that we're getting a lot more development on her than we're getting with the uh, the main protagonists. Well, that's not really unusual. I mean, a lot of uh, horror and science fiction, uh, you know, it's the villains that kind of drive the plot. So. When I pierced the cell, the floor... Dang, that laptop. Pierced. Thrilling audio-visual repair sequences. I think it oh, that's great. some pea soup drink. right there. Prep, look. Come on. Why not? Why can't you let them out? Why was this not attempted 15 seconds before? I swear, like, it's either Umbrella or Wayland yutani with these people. Th those, those practical effects look really good. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. It's probably like a, a balloon or something like that. They blew up, covered in all that gunk so that it looks like it's growing. It's a simple, but it's a really cool effect. You have to follow protocol in an experiment where you're dealing with alien life. And I'm pretty sure, like, you know, OSHA, the FDA, and a bunch of other organizations don't really know about this, so... Who exactly is going to get after you for this? It's the fanny pack that really ties the outfit together. You, legs. You're in. <laughs> legs. <laughs> She's very tall, though. I think like, Natasha Hestrich is like 5'10", 5'11", something like that. Oh, easy, easy, easy. I've got a party to go to and no one to take me. I'll take you. You will? Yeah. Okay. Ooh, tentacle blocked. You obviously do not know who you are fucking with! Oh my dude, that jacket, no. Mm -mm. It's a nice little touch, like she's, she's watching, learning, she's gonna copy, yeah. There's always some action in this part of town. Yeah, the action's in your passenger seat. So crowded. Oh god, he had that set up. Really? Dude, you're basically flirting with a xenomorph. That, this, mm -mm. I said you're not leaving. <sighs> what? She actually xenomorphed him. Okay. <laughs> well, she wasn't exactly smothered with a mother's love or taught good manners, you know what I mean? I asked yeah, she'd be the monkey that chooses wire mother. It's a no, she could have just walked out. Why did she have to kill him? Well, she didn't have to, but he kind of pressed the issue. The ah! Ass hole. Don't 
put your hand on her and put your weight on her? You don't know what's broken? I mean, I know she's fine, but you don't. I'm just realizing that uh, this team hasn't really done much in the way of, like, actively looking for her. Like, the best thing they managed to do so far is come up with a plan of making the alien without the human part. But everything else has been other people giving him information. I feel like you're sending out subtle hits. I, I better get the phone. Behold the power of a boner. Yep, you don't goof, man. I mean, there's really no way out of this, but what the hell? Oh. No, no. Yeah, they're, they're starting to shift her into more, I guess, outright evil territory here. Because all she had to do was leave. It took more time to kill the guy and then try to leave and hide than it did for her to just take off. Again, she doesn't have any conscience either. So, like, there's still no malicious intent. It's all instinct. But as a villain, she is a lot more complex than I thought she was going to be. Hey, you're gonna help me, please. Oh my god, what's the matter? She is learning how to be, like, devious and underhanded. Let the hotel get some rest. Tomorrow night, we'll go back to the club. Oh my god, she's howling them. Yeah, nine. I'll have to leave with you. Thanks, Dan. You are about to enter another dimension. A dimension not only of sight and sound, but of mind. Your next stop, Michael Madsen. Yeah, in a strange way, the fact that she's so new to acting is actually kind of working in her favor, because it really does help her portray the sort of, like, detached, inhuman persona. I wouldn't hurt you. I promise. I wouldn't hurt you. Yes, you would. I just don't know it yet. No, I wouldn't. That's creepy. Like, she's really starting to, like, lean into her instincts as a predator. You know, typically in a story, the villains are the ones that are uh, the most proactive, they're the ones that are actually making plans, and the heroes are the ones that are responding. Um, which can actually get really boring if, if you know, not done right. In this case, though, she is, she's kind of carrying the story. Like, everything is a response to her, and she's actually planning out... What? She need a second car for Yeah, calm down, he's not gonna do anything. <laughs> Holy hell, there she is. Oh, hell no. I think this woman right here, I think she's probably like the one I feel the most sorry for in this movie because she literally was trying to help a woman that I'm more than sure she thought had been assaulted or kidnapped or something. Like she, like she put herself out there to help this girl and then she gets kidnapped, gets her finger cut off and she is about to go in a really ugly way if what I think is going to happen, happens. APB, we're looking for a blue sedan being driven by a blonde cephalopod. Damn! Oof. Sorry, lady. Well, that'll do it. I mean, if she'd been in there, I, I, I would hope that does it. Jeez. I mean, you always got to be careful, though, because, you know, even if they knew she was in there, they were... <laughs> Alien's dead, sir. All right, double tap it. With what? A couple of Hellfire missiles? Yes, yeah, sir, that'll work. Tomorrow you can go back to your lives. Congratulations on a job. You don't even done. know if she was in the car. Like, you, you haven't even checked to see that there's a so. body in there. My God. Ricos, it's called a Long Island iced tea. It's got tea in it. <laughs> All right, yeah, these these two are actually like a, they're a good they're a good comedic pair. Hey, Sil. Oh, oh, she looked. I like her better as a brunette. Nice. Can I try She's she also learned how to be real subtle. Like the first couple times she tried to go with a guy, she was. Uh, pretty forward, uh, let's put it that way. But uh, no, she's learning. Like, as I get, I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised at her as a character. Like, she actually kind of had a, a bit of an arc, going from really innocent 
and scared to kind of embracing all those instincts and going from completely inexperienced to right now she's hunting she's not just like going after like the guy or the first guy like she's like there's a purpose <laughs> there's a purpose to what she's doing oh damn that was his room but this kind of thing doesn't usually happen to me usually i don't think this thing ever happens to you what about protection yeah protection in this case would be a tank That's a nice callback. That's the same commercial she saw in the beginning. Actually, the thing she saw in the beginning with the car crushing into the uh, the electrical station, that's how she pulled off her plan too. That's a good little bit of foreshadowing too and a, and a good little uh, callback. And just like a praying mantis, she's about to chew your head off. <laughs> oh, hell. Jesus. She must have come through here. What gave it away? The dead body? Yes, beneath the glam and glitz of Los Angeles lies a complex infrastructure. Where do you think she went, Dan? We're asking him. He's only been right like half the time, and even then it's been after the fact. Okay, design is awesome. The vocalizations literally sound like just somebody like screaming into a microphone. You want to fire there, Dan? There you go! And you lost your flamethrower. And you're dangling off the edge over a pool of burning oil. Is that a nipple tentacle? Mark me down as scared and horny. <laughs> Whew! It's a tad anticlimactic, but sure. Let go, you motherfucker. Ew, she had graboid guts inside her. All right, that was uh, Species. Let's talk about it. That was actually a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, in some ways. Uh, in some ways, not so much. Probably the best thing about it was Syl as a character. They could have gone the evil alien invasion route. They could have. They could have very much gone that way. But they really played up her as a very innocent and very scared character. The fact that she started out as a girl and we saw her being scared when the tentacles were sprouting out of her and all that stuff. That was really cool. Um, and then even as an adult, yeah, you're, they're right. She has no moral compass. There's nothing telling her this is wrong, this is right. So there's no malicious intent. There's no, you know, her enjoying the kill, so to speak. It's all instinct. She's really nothing more than a scared animal that eventually just learns how to be very devious it, it, that was that was really really cool Natasha Henstridge as, as a as a performer also also did a, a pretty good job considering like I said this was her first major acting gig or maybe in her first acting gig I'm, I'm not sure which one of those is correct but uh that was probably really good that's probably the best part of it uh, still as a character now everybody else uh I I was not feeling it uh probably probably Dan and uh Doc Ock there um uh, they they probably had the the best like chemistry you know, i really bought them as just these two guys that got thrown into this thing and you know struck up a, a kind of a, a weird friendship around them that was cool they had some, some pretty funny lines uh the characters though the protagonists like it, it, they were so flat which is not that strange in a movie like this but i think in this one it was just a lot more obvious how flat they were given how interesting sill was uh, some of the special effects did not age that well. The, the, C, the CGI in particular, the, the practical effects still, I think, look pretty cool, especially the, the scene in the lab with the tentacles and all those things. So a little bit of good, a little bit of bad. Not, not, a, not, a, not a classic movie, but definitely definitely an, uh, uh, an enjoyable one. This is, a, this is a Saturday night movie, definitely. So thank you very much for watching if you like what you saw go ahead and hit that like button subscribe sign up for notifications go on to patreon link is in the description i will see you next time